Good morning. morning. I welcome you as we gather on this fifth Sunday of Pentecost and wish all of the fathers a very happy Father's Day. As we share announcements, we invite those seated on the inside aisles to sign the friendship pads and to pass them along. And as always, we encourage you to greet one another warmly. Following the service, we will gather up in Fellowship Hall for coffee and conversation. The altar flowers this morning are given in loving memory of George and Millie LaPerch by their children, Kathy, Lee, and Deb. During the summer months, if you have a garden and you would like to donate flowers for the altar, please call the church office. You can also do that in memory or in honor of a loved one. The office will also tell you which Sundays are open for the summer. And I'm going to call upon our Minister of Visitation. Visitation? Oh, that's right. That's I don't a know. new title. <laughs> <clears throat> Believe it or not, that's from 35 years ago when I was in South Portland. <laughs> and I was five, so. <laughs> Good morning. Next Saturday is the Strawberry Festival that we co-host with the Historical Society. We need a few more volunteers, so if you are available to help set up Friday afternoon or at the event on Saturday, please let me know. This week, we are beginning takeout church with our Sunday school children. It's not summer yet. We want to make sure we get takeout church in before anybody goes away on their summer travels. So there are pizza boxes and tables full of activities that they will put in the pizza boxes and they can take them with them to keep Jesus and church on your mind when you travel. If you would like your own flat Jesus or any of the other activities, please stop by during coffee hour and we'll make sure you get your own flat Jesus, no matter your age. And this summer we'll be doing Pets Unleashed. Next week we'll be kicking it off with an adopt-a-pet party and all of the children will get to adopt a stuffed animal and they'll do a whole adoption and pet-themed party to celebrate the beginning of our summer program. Thank you. couple of additional announcements. Next Sunday following the service is North Reading's annual Pride Ride. We have a number of people in our church who will be participating, including Pastor Gail and myself. And if you would like to participate in this, there is a link in the Hilltop News, and you can also speak to either Pastor Gail or myself following the service. Coming up this week in the Hilltop News, you'll also see a link for a week at a beach house on York Beach, Maine. Our thanks to Laura Kaplan and her husband Clark who are donating this beach house. It's actually about a block in, but uh, very accessible to the beach. And they are donating this week the last week of August, and we'll be selling 150 tickets at $10 each. The money will be used to upgrade, upgrade the technology here in the sanctuary. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us draw near to God's throne of grace and rejoice from, in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting and is with us here now.
join me in the call to worship. The body of Christ is where children of God bring their laughter. And the young of God come to let their spirits dance. The body of Christ is where lepers come to be touched. And the dying spring to eternal life. The body of Christ is where children lead and those who are wise follow. Where mountains are moved. The body of Christ is where people go when they skin their hearts. And where every person is precious and beautiful. The body of Christ is where the lion lies down with the lamb. And where people can disagree and still hold hands. This is the body of Christ that we come to celebrate. join me in the prayer of invocation. O oh Lord God, we gather this day in the spirit of the living Christ, who bowed his head in the garden of Gethsemane and called you Abba, Father, as you entrusted your only begotten Son to the care of his earthly father, Joseph. We give thanks for our fathers. Here in the peace of your sanctuary, we honor them and all the grace-filled memories that shall be forever etched upon our hearts. This we ask as disciples of our Savior, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not 
not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice and be glad in it. Let us give thanks for all of the blessings that God bestows upon us as we come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings.
dedication. God of blessings that we can see and blessings that can only be felt in the beating of our hearts, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day. As we stand before your altar with our tithes and offerings, fill us with your spirit of wisdom that we may show our gratitude not only with our faithful giving, but also through our faithful living. This we ask as disciples of the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite the boys and girls to join me. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you, and I feel like I've been left out. Pastor Gail has been doing the children's messages for the last few weeks, and I'm glad that it's my turn again to be with all of you, because this is one of my favorite parts of the service. And I have a question for you, actually a couple of questions. Would you like me if I had this up in Fellowship Hall for you for coffee hour? M&M's. How many of you like M&M's? How many of you like M&M's? All I can say, if you didn't raise your hand, you're a borderline heretic. No. M&M's are good, aren't they? So you really like me if I put these up there for you for coffee hour, right? Yeah. How about this? Would you like me if I took you all to water country? You can see this picture here. That's up in Portsmouth. That ride is called Geronimo. And we went with the youth group a few years ago, and I was the only one brave enough, I mean stupid enough, <laughs> to go down that. And somewhere I have a video of it, but I couldn't f find it. Would you like me if I took you all to water country where you could splash and play? Would you like me if I invited you all over to the parsonage to make Samoas. And some of you remember this, don't you? Because you're here this morning. This was taken after the Memorial Day parade, at parade and we had a cookout at the parsonage, and you all made Samoas. And some of you even use this fancy contraption. I just don't do a stick. I get a Samoa stick. And, oh, it gets better, wait for it. So there's a button you push, you know this, right? Because you use them. You push the button and it spins the... <gasps> so you don't have to worry about burning your marshmallow. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So let me ask you a few more questions. Would you like it if I said, you know what, I'm going to take these M&Ms home and I'm going to eat them all myself. I'm not going to share any of them with you. Would you like that? Yeah. No. Would you like it if I said, you know what, I'm going to invite some of the boys and girls in the church to go to water country, but I'm not going to invite you. Would you like that? No. And if I invited some people over for... Samoas and didn't invite you, would you like that? No. Would you like it if I invited you over and I didn't let you use my fancy Samoa <laughs> stick? No. Well, sometimes people do things that make us sad or maybe even a little mad, and we still love them because that's what it means to follow Jesus. And there's a story that we're going to look at this morning about King David, and he had a son who disobeyed him and turned on his father and wanted nothing to do with his father. And when, his son, when 
his son Absalom died, do you think David was happy? Even though Absalom didn't treat him very nicely, you think David was still sad? Yeah, David was still sad because Absalom was his son. And I like that story because David actually cried out, Oh, Absalom, Absalom, my son, would that I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And I like that story because it reminds me that even when someone does something that makes us sad or even mad, we still can keep on loving them just the way God loves us, just the way Jesus loves us. We have that gift of love in our hearts, so we can still love even when someone makes us sad or mad. And I believe that Abby Thorne has the prayer this morning, so I'm going to invite you to come right up here and sit down next to me. There we go, Get a little closer one, make sure you're on camera, okay? Dear God, on this Father's Day, we thank you for all those who take care of us and teach us right from wrong. Thank you for grandfathers and fathers and uncles who never stop loving us, even when we don't do things that we should do. Help us to be like them and love others, even when they make us sad or mad. Amen. Thank you. Oh. I'm going to give Pastor Gail these M&Ms and she can put them out during coffee hour. <laughs> Please be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Good people, let us enter into this time of stillness that we might be one with our God. My friends, are there prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day? Yes, Sharon. Prayers said for uh, Kathy Whitmore's 
family, her brother, um, youngest brother, Shane, passed away. So we certainly lift up um, uh, Kathy and Rex and Shirley as well, their daughter, and uh, ask that God's spirit be upon them as they mourn this loss. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, Andy, sorry. That's okay. Uh, it's twofold. Um, one is for Laura McMullen, who couldn't come in today because she's still experiencing pain. Um, and then the other one is the Boston Celtics have only one game to win. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's start with Lauren. <laughs> As, as some of you know, Lauren suffers from fibromyalgia, and so we ask that God's healing be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. And as I always say, when it comes to things like sports and the weather, I'm in sales, not management. <laughs> so let us pray for a good game tomorrow night. Lord, in your goodness. <laughs> yes, Tom. I wanted to tell everyone that my good friend, Bert Whittier, came home from the hospital Friday. However, he will return to Br uh, Brigham's and Dana Farber to receive uh, chemotherapy and uh, dialysis. But his, the doctors are very pleased with the direction all his members are taking. So we give thanks for this good news. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. Thought I might have seen it. I did see another hand. Yes, Gail. I'd just like to ask for prayers for my mother-in-law, Bonnie. Uh, she's going in for knee surgery on Tuesday. So we lift up Gail's mother, Bonnie, as she prepares for her knee surgery. We ask God to be with her doctors. Lord, in your goodness. Amen. And something that a lot of you don't know, Gail and I grew up near each other, although I think I'm a little older than, than Gail is, but um, she grew up in Brockton and I grew up in Whitman right next door. Yes. I ask prayers for Joyce Sampson's family. She was a neighbor on Orchard Drive that passed away on Saturday morning. And the last name again? Joyce Sampson. Sampson. So we lift up the family of Joyce Sampson, who has passed away, and ask that God be with them as they prepare to offer up their sacred goodbyes. Lord, in your goodness. Amen. Yes, Sally. I'd like to offer prayers of thanks for all the fathers who have passed on and left us yes. here to do well. Yes, I have been thinking about my father quite a bit over these last few days, and we certainly remember them and our fathers who are still with us, and we treasure all of those grace-filled moments that will be forever etched upon our hearts. Lord, in your goodness. We also lift up Laura Kaplan's husband, Clark. His mother-in-law, Diane, passed away on Friday at the age of 92. Uh, certainly, Laura has had a lot on her plate these last few weeks, and so we ask that God be with them. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. And we lift up Donna Kozak as she awaits results from her diagnostic medical procedure and ongoing health issues. We ask that God be with her. Lord, in your goodness. Let us pray. God of all that has been and all that is yet to be, God who is here with us now, walking with us, guiding us along the way, we give you thanks for your presence here in this wonderfully blessed body of Christ. We also know, Holy One, that you do not dwell in buildings made with human hands, but that you are also waiting for us in the world to which we shall return when we have sung all of our sacred songs and uttered our amens. As we make our way through the week that is to be, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds, that we may sense your presence with us. Help us uh, to discover in us gifts that we have, that we can share with others and bring forth an abundance of loving kindness. For truly, we know that we live in a world that is being torn with strife and 
that makes our hearts heavy. Holy One, we know that we cannot do everything, but we also know that we can do something and that we can do all good things through Christ who strengthens us. So we give you thanks for that blessing. In his name, amen. I'd like to call upon Nancy Thorne, who will share with us the scripture reading from 2 Samuel. Good morning. Good morning. Our reading today is from the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel, chapter 18, reading selected verses beginning with verse 5. The story is about David's relationship with his son Absalom, who has rebelled against him. When David is about to defeat Absalom's followers, he gives special instructions to his commanders. And I read these verses. And the king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders about Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. And the men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the loss there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest devoured more people that day than the sword. And Absalom happened to meet the servants of David, Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak, and his head caught fast in the oak, and he was suspended between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Joab's armbearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. After, Abraham, after Absalom is killed, the commanders send a message to David to let him know the result of the battle. And behold, the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good news from my lord the king, for the Lord has delivered you this day from the hand of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up against you for the evil be like that young man. And the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would I have died instead of you? So ends the reading of this verse. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our redeemer. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I did a funeral and while I was at the wake, I saw a plaque with a quote that made me smile. I later learned that the quote was something that Wade Boggs, the baseball player, originally said many years ago. The quote went like this. Anyone can be a father. It takes someone special to be a dad. Isn't that the truth? It wouldn't surprise me if that's the way 
many of you feel about your fathers. It's certainly the way I felt about my father. Even today, I have a great deal of respect when it comes to the way he and my mother raised us. And after my mother passed away, I was truly blessed when my father came to live with me. Not only did it give us more time to spend with each other, but it also made it possible for me to help take care of him in his final years. Although I will admit, we had some challenging moments. One of those challenging moments occurred when we were in his RV at a campground just outside Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. When the time came to head home, I went outside and unhooked the electricity and the water and the cable. It was then that I realized that my wallet was missing. So I went back into the RV and I started searching for it. No luck. I went outside and searched the grounds around the RV. Again, no luck. I even went up to the lodge where we checked in the night before, thinking I might have left it there. But again, no luck. So I went back to the RV and again frantically began to search it. Now, when my father saw me doing that, he asked what was wrong. I need to tell you that at this point in my father's life, he was beginning to show some very early signs of dementia, which is why I was surprised when he said, well, last night I think you left your wallet on the table over there before you went to bed. As soon as he said that, I remembered, yeah, that's where I left my wallet. I went over to the table and it wasn't there. Now imagine my surprise when I turned around and I saw my father standing there holding my wallet. <laughs> Dad, I said, what are you doing with my wallet? My father got a little defensive and said, what are you talking about? This is my wallet. No matter what I said, he kept insisting that it was his wallet. So I finally said, Dad, open up the wallet and take a look at the driver's license in the wallet. When my father did that, a puzzled look came over his face and he said, with a great deal of surprise, how did your driver's license get in my wallet? <laughs> he kept going back and forth. And then I was even more surprised when he reached into his other pocket and pulled out a second wallet. I now figured this was my opportunity to convince him that the first wallet was actually mine. Dad, I said, since when have you had two wallets? My father now was getting a little agitated and he said, what are you talking about? I've always had two wallets. <laughs> Finally, I was able to convince him that the first wallet was mine and he gave it back to me. We then began our journey home. When we got to the parsonage, I began to unload the RV. I brought several loads into the parsonage. I put some laundry in the washing machine. I probably made seven or eight trips back and forth between the RV and the house. As I did that, my father was sitting at the table doing something he loved to do. He was catching up on all the mail that had accumulated while we were gone. When I brought that last load into the house, my father was standing there in the kitchen, and I could tell he was really agitated. When I asked him what was wrong, he looked at me and said, I can't find my other wallet. <laughs> yes, we had some challenging moments, but I will say this about Durwood Willis Hughes, Jr. He was a good man and he was a wonderful father. He taught us what I like to call the three R's. And I don't mean reading, writing, and arithmetic. The three R's that he taught us were reverence for God, respect for others, and responsibility for yourself. And you know what? This crazy, mixed-up world that we live in would be a whole lot better 
if everyone took those three R's seriously. And this brings us to King David and his son, Absalom. Now, without getting into all of the family's dirty laundry, it's safe to say that Absalom didn't have a very good relationship with his father. Absalom had a troubled relationship with his father. It was so bad that Absalom rebelled against his father, but it wasn't your typical youthful rebellion. Absalom rebelled by gathering a small army together, and then he did everything he could to overthrow his father so that he, Absalom, could be the king of all Israel. And Absalom almost succeeded. It got to the point where David actually had to flee the palace and go into hiding. David, though, was a shrewd and skillful king. And it wasn't long before he was back in the palace and he had the upper hand once again. So as everyone was preparing for what they knew would be the final battle, David did something that shocked people. He gathered his commanders together and he gave them strict orders. Those commanders were Joab, Abishai, and Ittai. And David, in the presence of everyone in the courts, said to them, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. Those were his exact words. Deal gently with the young man Absalom for my sake. Only that's not what happened. You see, the commanders knew that as long as Absalom was alive, he was a grave danger, not only to David, but also to them. So after the commanders won the battle, they gave orders for Absalom to be killed. And what did David do when he found out that his son Absalom was dead? We're told that he went up above a gate in the city, a gate where everyone could see him, and he wept. He cried out, oh Absalom, my son, my son, my son Absalom, would that I had died instead of you, oh Absalom, my son, my son. Now here's a question for you. Is that the way it works out there in the so-called real world? Is that the way it works when someone does something like Absalom did? No. Out there in the so-called real world, when someone does something like Absalom, you don't forgive. You fight fire with fire. Out there in the so-called real world, it isn't about reconciliation and redemption. It's all about revenge and retribution. Out there in the so-called real world, when someone disagrees with you, that makes that person your enemy. Out there in the so-called real world, when someone's different, it means it's okay to criticize and condemn and even threaten that person. Of course, out there in the so-called real world, there isn't a whole lot of reverence for God these days, is there? Out there in the so-called real world, there isn't a whole lot of respect for others, is there? Out there in the so-called real world, you don't see a whole lot of people taking responsibility for their actions, do you? David wasn't like that, though. David took those three R's seriously, and because he did, what that means is you see in David a father who never stopped loving his son. You see a father who desperately wanted to be reconciled with his son. You see a father who knew that he also had to take some responsibility for the troubled relationship that he had with his son Absalom. Now you could say, oh sure, of course David's going to do that. Absalom was his son. The Lord will tell you though, 
that when you build your life around those three R's, it makes it possible for you to do what David did, not only with those in your family, but with everyone. When you build your life around those three R's, it makes it possible for you to do what David did with the co-worker who's bad-mouthing you because she wants to be the one who gets that promotion. It makes it possible for you to do what David did with the transgender person who you think is a little strange, or the guy who has that great big political sign with an expletive on it prominently displayed on his front yard. When you build your life around those three R's, you understand what Abraham Lincoln meant one day when he said to a friend, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. Abraham Lincoln took those three R's seriously. It's one of the things that made him a great president. It also got him into difficulties from time to time. One of those difficult moments occurred when he gave a speech, and in that speech, he talked kindly about people in the South who had rebelled. After the speech was over, a woman went to the president and scolded him. She told him that instead of complimenting his enemies, he should be doing everything he could to destroy them. At that point, Lincoln looked at the woman and said, Madam, do I not destroy my enemy when I make him my friend? Good people, make no mistake about it. As a disciple of the risen Christ, you and I and all who believe in him and love him and follow him are being called to go out there into that so-called real world and show people that when you embrace those three R's, it will make your life and the world a whole lot better. So on this Father's Day, I have no regrets, no reservations at all in saying that I am truly thankful for my Father who taught us those three R's. But if I'm being honest, I'll also tell you that I'm thankful that he didn't give me the name Durwood Willis Hughes III. <laughs> Amen. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel God deep within. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for God has washed and made me whole. God's love for me is like your gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel God in my soul. Some folks may doubt, some folks may scorn, all can desert and leave me alone. But as for me, I'll take God's heart, for God is real and I can feel God in my heart. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for God has washed and made me whole. God's love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel God in my soul. I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took all your sins away. But since that day, yes, since that hour, God has been real, for I can feel God's holy power. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. 
Yes, God is real, for God has washed and made me whole. God's love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel God in my soul. People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us go forth to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen.